Hello everyone. Well, it's time to do another little video for you. We've been really busy here at the shop. It's been kind of a crazy last couple of weeks. Uh, we ended up having to get our uh, roof re-shingled on the main shop, so it was kind of like having like 40 woodpeckers on steroids nailing for, the, for two days. And it's been extremely, extremely hot here. It's the, with the humidity, it's been probably close to 38 to 40 degrees Celsius. And uh, believe me, for us, that is very, very hot. We're, uh, we have a hard time coping with that kind of heat. In the meantime, it's uh, in Fahrenheit, it's about 70, 68 to 70 degrees here today, which is almost comfortable. Still a little bit too warm for me, to be honest with you, but 65 is the ideal, but I'll, I'll take this over the heat any day. So just gonna take you around this morning and just uh, show you a few things that we, we got on the go. It's kind of a quiet day, yet there's lots to do, but it's a good time to do a video because when it's hectic crazy here, I just can't get a chance to even open the camera bag to get the camera out. So let's go have a look and I'll show you a few things that we got, uh, we got on the go. They say you shouldn't walk with a camera and basically I agree. I'll try to keep it as smooth as I can. But uh, at least I'm just not cut from seeing the scene and end up in a different place. But you can see the, uh, the new shingles up on the shop. And we had a couple extra vents put in as well. So that should, uh, that should make life a little easier for the roof anyway. And then over here, Kathy and I were out for a ride one night and we went by a local pond or a lake, some people call it, and we saw water lilies. So guess what? She made me walk out in the pond and, and take these water lilies water lilies home and there they are there but the funny part about it is the buggers close up in the nighttime they start to close up around say four o'clock in the evening and they close right tight like you'll see that one there he's never opened yet and they'll uh, they'll open up in the morning and close again in the evening so it's really cool but we've noticed something else we've done some research and we found out that goldfish love water lilies, especially chewing on them. So look at all the bite marks on the water lilies. So it's pretty neat. I think they're actually really enjoying it. There's, there's a couple over there that really, really got that chewed up pretty good. So I thought you might find that interesting. The fish are pretty well gone down below. They were just fed few minutes ago so their feeding frenzy is over okay so let's go have a look so anyway I just finished this little critter this came in with uh, fuses blowing uh, not cutting properly and basically a little bit of a mess so what I've done is I've taken off the blades and sharpened them adjusted the deck height and uh, I don't know if I fixed the, the fuse problem at all because they say it was blowing fuses all the time but I've moved around some wiring and I've uh, made some changes to the wiring the way it was routed I've put some you know insulating tape around certain portions of it and, and extra uh, electrical ties and I just pretty well mowed for about an hour with it and it's been working flawlessly so it's a uh, I'm going to consider that a success and basically call the customer and said, come and get your uh, ZTR. So that one is done. But we have a commercial unit over there I'm going to show you next. It's kind of a, a weird item. Well, there you have it. It's a commercial Toro. It's a diesel. It's uh, used at a golf course. And it's got some issues. It's... Uh, Boy, like the deck don't lift level, so I'm suspecting something is broke on the lift arms. I haven't even had an opportunity to look up underneath of it yet. I know the belts are falling off of it. It might have bearings bad. I don't know. I'm going to see if I can pull this up and let you have a look-see. Yeah, just look at the, uh, at the belt on the fan, fan pulley. 
completely worn out. Just look. And it was running hot, so I guess we know why. Even the belts down here are really loose. But just having a quick look, there's a tensioner. And that's not set up properly. So I got some work to do there as well. And uh, just to basically a general check over, see if we can get this working better than it is because right now it's a it's kind of a sad unit so uh, I'm gonna get it in the shop and have another look. Okay so I gotta see if I can put this in the shop but it's not lifting the deck properly. This side seems to come up other than the other side, far further than the other side so see if we can get it to go and uh, show you what I mean about the deck. <laughs> some issues with it like down here where the blades are there's a lot of play in that spindle and the same thing with uh, what well, this one this one is even worse so I'm gonna have to find out what's causing this one here is good suspected bearing is gone so I'm going to have to take the covers up here and have a look-see and see what's involved. So let's get out. Guys, here's the top off the, the belts, or the top off the, the cover for the belts. we got issues there, and this one here is definitely loose. Got a buddy of mine here in the shop. Say hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. <laughs> Friggin' teachers, they think you're smart. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so I gotta strip this down now and have a look. And there you go, fixed. You're making a fine adjustment. Don't crack it off. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. Well, it just keeps getting worse here, so what I gotta do is uh, the bearings are gone here. And this is how I found the seal, which is not great. So we're going to have to order up some bearings and seals. I'm going to take uh, take this piece down, the arbor, and I'm going to press out the bearing races and whatnot, and be prepared for that. And while I'm waiting for the parts, I can uh, move on to other parts of the equipment and see if I can work something out with the other issues. So a slight change of plan. I won't be able to get that arbor out there in the middle. It's uh, all the nuts on the bottom are pretty well seized on solid. So there's uh, two, four, there's six of them, which means I have 12 to take out. So I'm just going to knock the races out of them there and uh, get the bearings out in the seals, which I've just done. So I'll have to take the other side apart here now and. Uh, when I get them apart, I can concentrate on fine bearings and seals, and also I'll just take the blades and resharpen them because I, I won't be able to get any here on the island to fit this. And then I might just uh, drop the deck all together. Uh, actually, I have another problem too, come to think of it. This wheel here, this wheel here is gone. So I'm gonna have to make up some kind of a wheel for that. I won't have one that wide, but I'll find something that'll 
whatever I put there is certainly going to be better than what's there now. Then I'm going to drop the deck clear of the machine and uh, that should make working on the rest of the piece of equipment easier. Well, all the bearings and races are removed from those two spindles and I took the uh, wheel off there that was on the uh, deck and uh, yeah, it's in pretty bad shape as you can see. So I don't know, it's, uh, I think what happened to it, it just rusted out. So there's no point in trying to fix that. So I'm going to see if I got something here that I can make work for now. Well, I got a, a wheel that might work, but it's, uh, it's the same height, but it's a lot narrower. But got to work with what we got on hand, so I'm going to have to try to give this a shot. Okay. I got a wheel to fit in here. I had to make up a sleeve because the bearing was a little bit too big for the bolt. And then I had to make spacer plates because the wheel is a good bit narrower than the, uh, the original wheel that was on it. I like the idea of the wider wheel. The only problem is can't get one on the island. So this is going to have to do for now. Also, we can't get the seals but we got all the bearings. So I got the uh, seals air freighting in, so we should have them tomorrow if the fog don't hinder the, uh, the flight. So there's no point in putting the bearings in without the seals. So I think my next step is now to, I got, oh, by the way, I got the uh, blades sharpened and balanced. So my next step is to remove the mower deck and I suspect there's a problem down here I'd say there's a lot of play there's a lot of stuff worn out there so I'm going to take that apart next and I'm going to see if I can uh, have a look at it and see what's up with that hey guys give a listen to this my lord well I guess now we know why everything sounded so bad when I Turn the power tag off onto the mower. So I gotta remove them, see if I can get bearings for that. Okay, the deck is off, as you can see. We gotta order some parts for it. They were complaining that the deck is not lifting high enough. Well, this is all worn the tie rod in. Kathy, just get your camera down here. Look. Look at all the slop in it. So, I mean. The cylinder's only got about a four inch travel anyway. The four inch travel is all gone with the slop in the, in the front, in the uh, lift arms. So I'm going to pull them apart and then I'm going to determine if they can be rebuilt or if I just may buy a, a new set of arms. We shall see. Well, there's a lot of slop. Look, that's how much is worn out. Yep, yeah, that's incredible. So, I think what I might try to do is uh, rebuild it. Because I don't think that's going to be very cheap. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I should price it anyway. And we shall see. We got two studs cracked off on the other side, on the wheel, that were always cracked off. And I haven't even started working on the tractor portion yet. <laughs> oh, good gracious. <laughs> oh. You're going to want a golf course someday. Oh, yeah. Okay, continue on. Well, now that we've got the, uh, the front mower assembly off and the lift arms, the hydraulic turned out, the hydraulics part turned out to be uh, just fine. The deck wasn't lifting due to all the, the wear and slop that was in the linkages, so. I'm going to uh, order up some parts. The uh, next line of attack here now is we got some trouble with the uh, main belt tensioner down here. So we're gonna, gonna have a go at that. And uh, I don't think there's much work to do on the engine part. Just check it over. I'll take you outside now and show you exactly uh, what everything looks like apart. So basically there it is minus the exhaust, the old exhaust system. That's getting ready to be uh, thrown away today. And as you can see, 
still waiting on bearings and seals for the uh, the blades and stuff and uh, and of course the swing arms they'll be I'll be rebuilding them they're in pretty bad shape Let's see if I can get you close there yeah they're they're terrible but the uh, the swing arms I think they want it like almost seven hundred dollars each or not swing arms but the lift arms they want it almost seven hundred dollars each so that's why we went the route to uh, to rebuild I can rebuild them fairly cheap in the shop so we got our parts breakdown of all the different components for that machine up on the computer so we're just gonna pick through what we need and call the dealer and just get them to order in the parts so hopefully uh, it won't take too long to get them but uh, that's one of the necessary evils when you live on an island so hopefully in a few days next week we'll be able to uh, to get at it anyway back at my mower project again these arms I think are seven or eight hundred dollars each yeah so the problem is is that these inserts are supposed to have bushings well they're worn out so bad that not only are the bushings worn out but so is the actual cavity as you can see inside so what I've got done I got the boring head into the uh, into the milling machine and I'm going to try to bore them out and then just machine new uh, sleeves to go in there okay, I got one sleeve cut out as you can see it didn't come out without a fight but it is definitely definitely wore out you couldn't put no bushing in that it was, it was terrible so I'm just going to make up a, a sleeve to go in here now with a grease nipple to take the pin I don't even think I'm going to put any bushings in it that thing is probably 20 years old it lasted this long so I'm going to uh, just make the bushings and uh, weld them in and if they need to be replaced in it'll be someone else's worry I guess 20 years from now now in the meantime guys I know for you machinists out there I'm uh, this is sacrilegious what you're looking at this setup but the shape of the arm it fits uh, I had to use my toolmaker's vise in my vise here to keep it to to change the uh, position of this so I could actually do the the cutting out. I know it's not something that's usually done, but guys, you know, in a shop, you end up doing what you have to do to make the job work, and that's the situation here today. So you can see now that I got the old bushings and insert milled out same with this one here so I'm just gonna have to uh, make up new inserts in there I'm not gonna bush this one I'm just gonna make just a, an insert and put a grease nipple on it this stuff is quite a bit thicker so I'm going to uh, take this into the lathe and I'm going to uh, cut it down then when I get it cut down I'm gonna bore it out and uh, there's my old lathe right there guys I know you guys like looking at tools so yeah there's a tool showing you a tool <laughs> anyway I gotta go to work because if the wife comes comes back to the shop and catches me doing a, a video I'm fired I could only wish Anyway guys, be back to once. Okay, the pins and bushings are ready to be welded in. If anybody is out there saying it's five o'clock somewhere, well, it's here in Bay Roberts because I'm gonna tell you something. The only way they're getting welded in right now in them arms is if the elves welds it in. So I'll be out first thing in the morning and we'll get back at it. You going to work today or what? It's nine o'clock, you must be on night shift, are you? <laughs> My lord, hard case. Yeah. She's hardly worthwhile coming to work now. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'll show you uh, the old pins compared to the new pins. We're having torrential rains here this morning with uh, thunder and lightning. So it's the next morning, obviously, and you can see these old pins are pretty well are done. They had 
that's why the new pins so I'm gonna get ready to stitch those bushings in and uh, the weapon of choice is going to be our Millimatic uh, 252 so uh, that'll do a, a nice job with it then I might have to do something with the back end pins because there's a little bit of slop there I don't know if it's going to be enough to make much of a difference but we'll uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it see it well that's as cool as well it's not super cool but it's cool no it's not super cool well you're an expert at everything else cut the old ones off and weld them on but the budget don't allow that so they're basically going to be uh, welded on so we'll uh, it'll be strong not quite uh, that's not quite the way it's going to be but it'll be something similar to that so it'll be strong and uh, it'll work out well one of our subscribers, uh, Tyler Donovan, uh, asked me a while back, Paul, where's your compressor? I don't see your compressor in the shop. Well, 
Tyler, it's up there. It's a, uh, it's a five horsepower, 60 gallon, uh, single phase, 220 volt compressor. It's a commercial compressor. It's been up there for 20 years. The only thing is the last, uh, I think, six years ago, I encased it. It's vented outside and the uh, lines, of course, come in to the shop and it, uh, it, it's worked out quite well. And of course, somebody's gonna ask me what that thing is there on the, the wall. Well, that's a fixture that bolts to the workbench and I can swing a transmission or an engine or a small engine, not a full-size engine, small engine, and uh, it can twist 360 degrees when you're working on it. And that's something I made, oh, maybe 10 or 15 years ago. But uh, it gets used a lot, and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Well, there you go, that's the end pieces. On and welded. So, that should, uh, that should work out better. And this is the old pin here. And there's the, the new pins. So basically, those arms are ready to install. Okay, lift arms are installed. There's a, there's a lot less play in them now, and as you can see, they're greased, and the pins are in. They even got some grease on that front power takeoff shaft. Haven't been greased in a long time by the looks of it. Of course, I'm still waiting on these parts such as this uh, tie rod end and uh, some wheel stud lug nuts or lug nuts on the or studs on the other side they're uh, they're missing as well so I gotta wait for a, a pile of stuff when you live on an island out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean it takes time to get this stuff in but I think what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna have a look at this fuel pedal because that's uh, literally falling apart. Next thing that'll uh, give out completely and you won't be able to uh, to use the thing. So while it's here, it's a good opportunity to at least get it back in usable condition. Well, I can tell you one thing. I know exactly now how they built this uh, Toro commercial mower. They started off with the fuel pedal and they built the mower around it. Because, man, it is brutal to get off. But anyway, there is so much play everywhere. So I'm just going to have to tackle it one piece at a time. The first thing I got to do is to grease it. I'm going to have to make up some new pins or whatever because uh, holy smokes, that's rough looking. It's, it's, it's wore out, literally wore out. So I guess I'll degrease it and start at it. Well, now that I got uh, removed and degreased, I can see what's going on. Oh, by the way, how I degreased it, I use uh, Super Clean on anything like this, and I just pressure washer it then. But here you can see the bushing is cracked off and actually moved away from the, from the uh, insert, and now you can see all the play. And the same thing applies here. This one, although he's still there in place, he's in pretty rough shape. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, make a couple of, uh, machine a couple of uh, bushings to go in there. I have to take it apart. I usually take pictures of all this stuff before I take it apart that way. When the assembly starts again, I can say, well, if I run into a snag and I wonder how, how it went originally, I can refer back to the picture. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'll start making up some bushings. So now I can go assemble the uh, foot pedal. Okay guys, it's been a success. The pedal, remember before, would, would almost come to the screen before it would start to actually take up the uh, throttle. Now you have about, uh, I'm thinking, three-eighths of an inch free play, and then that's as far as it'll go. So it's well away from the screen. 
So it's uh, it's a huge, huge improvement. And you can see the new bushings and stuff up there. And I reinforced the brackets and stuff. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spray some fluid film up there, and uh, we'll sew up this aspect of the uh, I call it restoration, really. <laughs> but uh, now it's going to make a big difference to this machine because it is a very honorable machine. It's it's built well. It's heavy duty. It's commercial. So it deserves uh, it deserves to be working properly, and I think this is going to be a, a huge improvement to it. Hey guys, we're going to call this one a wrap because I don't know how long I how much film I got taken or how much video I got taken. So I don't want to get into like a full length movie because next thing you guys would be emailing us for popcorn and pop and stuff. So can't have that, can we, Kathy? I'm not going at that. You're not going at that. A lot of things you won't do. That's one of them. Isn't it? Well, right? let's not go there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I've been calling that last fix the fuel pedal, but it's not the fuel pedal, it's the HST pedal. And this thing runs now like a scald cat. Man, can it ever go? I almost popped the wheelie back and out. Yeah. So, here the beeper. There's always something, isn't it? It is. It looks different when I do deck. Yeah. Don't go talking decks. Oh, I thought you said dick. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Anyway, guys, we're going to take off. Nice evening. It poured rain here this morning, and we had thunder and lightning and all that good stuff. So we're going to uh, do a little bit of mowing next. So we're going to take off a little bit early. It's 4.30 now. Probably by 5 o'clock we'll be out of here. And uh, hopefully you'll find this a little bit enjoyable. I didn't show you a lot of the actual like lathe work and mill work because you can see all that all over the internet you know it's just the same old boring stuff plus the fact I mean if I showed you every detail holy smokes man you know like war and peace would be a shorter movie you know mm -hmm. right but anyway yeah uh, oh another thing too is when you guys comment if you don't see me reply on your comment there's always a reason, and th the only reason is because you got something turned off on your uh, on your uh, YouTube channel or your YouTube uh, membership. You probably got some privacy issues or something clicked because there's no reply by your uh, comment. So that's the reason why I haven't commented on you. So don't think that I'm replying to everybody else's and not yours. Go back and, and, and check your settings, and that way I'll be able to reply to your comments. So guys, thanks a lot. Appreciate you taking the time to watch this stuff. Hope you didn't find this too boring. Trying to mix it up a little bit for you. The next job, we got uh, I got some drivetrain issues with this thing I'm going to deal with probably tomorrow. And I'm going to get at the mower deck. And we're still, of course, waiting on parts. So with that, we'll say goodbye again. Take care of yourselves. And thanks for watching. And God bless.